In this lesson, we will define three measures of central tendency, commonly referred to as averages. We will answer three questions in this lesson. What is the average typical measure of a group? What is the mean, median, and mode? Which measure of center is most appropriate? We are often interested in describing a set of data by giving its average. Students and parents often ask a teacher, what was the class average? So let's look at an example using homework grades as we did in lesson two. We'll explore the answer to this question. What is the average homework grade for a class of 25 students? A, 82, B, 95, C, 100. To begin, we need the raw data that the teacher collected. The 25 homework grades are listed here. Before going to the next slide, take time to make a stem and leaf graph of the data. Pause the video while you work. The answer is on the next slide. Compare your stem and leaf graph to the one shown here. Can you tell that the data is skewed to the left? Most of the scores are high with only a few low scores. The dot plot on the next slide makes this easier to see. Here we can see the three zeros pulling the data away from the mostly high scores. When we talk about the average or typical homework score, in statistics we call this a measure of the center of the data. Statistics defines three ways of describing the center. These ways are mean, what most people call the average, the sum of the data divided by the total number of data members. Median, the middle of the data. Mode, the most frequently occurring value. The word average is usually defined as the mean of the data. To find the mean, you add all the scores and divide by the total number of scores. When there are duplicate scores, you can shorten the process by using multiplication for repeated scores. In our example, there are 10 100s, so I multiply 10 times 100 instead of adding 100 10 times. The total of all the scores was 2,045. Dividing by 25 gives a mean of 81 and 8 tenths, or approximately 82. The median is the center score, so the scores must be arranged in order. In our example of 25 scores, the data splits around 95, with 12 scores above and 12 scores below, so 95 is the median. The mode is the score that occurs most often. Frequency is the number of times a score occurs. In this example, there are 10 100s, so 100 is the mode. If we go back to our question, what is the average homework grade for this class of 25 students? It depends on which measure of average that we use. 82, 95, and 100 are all measures of central tendency, or the center of the data, or the average. So which average would be the best to report or use? When data is skewed, as this data is, the median is more typical of all the scores. It is resistant to being pulled away from the center. Here the mode is also good since so many students had a score of 100. The mean, which many of us would naturally choose, is below 72% of the scores. It is not typical and misrepresents the performance of this class. Here is one for you to try. Find the mean, median, and mode of this set of 26 scores. Pause the video so you can work. The mean is 52. Since there is an even number of scores, the median falls midway between the 13th and 14th score, between 75 and 80. We add the two scores and divide by 2 to find the middle. The median is 77 and 5 tenths. The mode is 0 this time, with a frequency of 11. So which average was most typical of the scores? 52 was not typical since it was between the high scores and the zeros. 77 and 5 tenths, maybe. It does reflect a center of high and very low scores. Zero, maybe, but it discounts all the high scores. We conclude that none of the measures of the center are very meaningful if given alone without more information about the data. Let's practice one more. Find the mean, median, and mode of these homework scores. 
Don't forget to pause the video while you work. Did you make a graphical display first? Here is a dot plot of the data. What is the shape of the data? Yes, it is perfectly symmetric. The mean, the median, and the mode are all 50. Does that make 50 the most typical score? What does it report when we say that the class average is 50? Is it meaningful given alone? Reflect on these two questions. Do the measures of the center, averages, always represent typical scores? Does giving students the class average, the one they want is the mean, help them understand their grade? Let's try an exercise to help us feel more understanding of measures of central tendency. Suppose 10 students take a five question test. Our data variable is the number of questions answered correctly. The mean number of questions answered correctly is three. What are possible values for the raw data? Here are two dot plots of possible data sets with a mean of three. In the first one, all students had three questions correct. In the second one, five students had one question correct and five students had all five questions correct. Before going to the next slide, try to make four more possible dot plots. Pause the video to study this slide and make your dot plots. All of these distributions have a mean of three. You may have thought of others. A conclusion that we can draw from this activity is that alone a measure of center tells very little about typical performance on a test. We also need to know the spread and shape of the raw data. This concludes Lesson 3. Can you answer the three questions in this lesson? What is the average typical measure of a group? What is the mean, median, and mode? Which measure of center is most appropriate? You may use the menu tabs on the left to study this lesson more. Lesson 4 has two parts. It will show you how to quantify and describe the spread or variability of the data.